Oh, Boston. I ran my first and only Boston Marathon to date in 2018. That year we battled frigid temps, torrential rain, and gale force winds. It was the closest I've been to dropping out of a race. It took every ounce of determination I had to get to that finish line, but man, this is one race that truly lives up to the hype. I'll never forget turning onto Boylston Street for that final home stretch. The crowd was electric, and they made you feel like a rock star whether you were limping or JV sprinting to the finish line. As they handed me my finisher's medal, I was crying tears of joy mixed with agony. After being coaxed into the medical tent for some hot soup, I was able to relish my experience and 244 performance, about four minutes back from the female winner that year, Des Linden. Anyway, enough about me. The journey from Hopkinton to Copley is one of the most famous treks in marathon racing. While some runners prefer to approach the actual race as a well-earned celebratory run, many runners relish in the opportunity to challenge the infamous course and even chase a PR. If your goal is to conquer the Boston course and run your best in April, then it's critical that you train for the specific demands of the course. In today's video, we'll look at the course-specific training you need to perform, including key hill workouts to run your best on Marathon Monday. <music> Before we get to the workouts, let's talk about the timing of a Boston specific training segment. Start too early and you'll be burnt out come March and April. Implement the course specific work too late and you'll be fried for race day. If you're an experienced runner with a strong foundation of training, your Boston training can generally start a little bit later in the season, about 12 weeks out from race day. In the early part of the year, you want to hold back and make sure you don't get too antsy with killer marathon workouts. Use the time at the start of the year to work on your weaknesses and the foundations of the course specific hill work we'll discuss later. If your training background is not as developed, you'll want to start your Boston cycle a little bit earlier, about 16 to 20 weeks out from race day. During this time, you'll want to work on building your mileage, running lots of aerobic threshold runs, and getting as comfortable as you can with the marathon training volume. You'll also want to include toned down versions of the hill work we'll outline in the rest of this video. Since the race is in mid-April, you'll want to begin the course-specific hill work in January. The hill work used to prepare for Boston is designed to strengthen and temper the quads for both the downhills and uphills of the course. Essentially, our goal with these workouts is to break down the quads early in the training cycle so you can do longer and harder hills later in the training segment without being as sore. Starting early also gives you plenty of time to slowly build up your tolerance without thrashing your legs. You can't expect your body to handle massive hill workouts in your first few sessions. A common mistake runners make when training for Boston is doing the wrong type of hill work and neglecting downhill training. Often runners will simply insert more hill repeats into their training, for instance, bumping up from four to eight 90 second uphill sprints. Unfortunately, doing lots of hill repeats is not the best way to help you run faster over a hilly course like Boston. In fact, many of the hills that you'll face will be long and gradual, not steep and short. Therefore, the specific muscles you're working and the specific demands you're placing on your body will be drastically different for a hill repeat workout versus the actual race. This doesn't mean that short hill repeats are useless, but rather they're only one element of course-specific hill training. Also, I can tell you firsthand that much of the difficulty of the Boston course comes from the early downhill miles, which trash your quads and make your legs feel like jello for the final miles. We need to train your legs to handle the stress by incorporating downhill work into your training as well. That's why we strongly recommend completing these four workouts at least once or twice during the Boston-specific phase of your training. The 242 workout is an uphill and downhill tempo run used by the Athletic Association or BAA on the actual Boston Marathon course. However, you can also simulate the same workout at home or on the treadmill. The local training group performs this workout twice, once in February and once in early March with the second session being slightly longer or faster. Start with a two mile tempo, mostly uphill, at your normal tempo run pace. Then you have a four to five minute easy jogging rest. You can reduce this tempo to one mile if you're a new runner or if it's your very first session. Next, 
run eight uphill slash downhill repeats on a moderate incline, about six to eight percent at marathon pace. Each uphill and downhill section is about a quarter mile long, so about 800 meters per repeat, giving you a total of four miles. There's no rest between these repeats, meaning it's a continuous effort. If on a treadmill, some newer versions have an option to set a decline, or you can prop up the back of your home treadmill with cement blocks to create a similar effect as described in the article link I'll put in the description of this video. Finally, after a three to four minute easy jog rest, Run a two mile, mostly downhill tempo run at normal tempo pace. Keep in mind that you can modify this workout to suit your mileage and typical weekly volumes, but keep the ratios the same and make sure you include both the uphill and downhill sections. Sometimes you can find this information online or apps like Strava will list the percent incline on specific running segments. If you wanna measure incline the old fashioned way, here's how. Divide the increase in elevation by the horizontal distance. For example, if you were to divide 800 by 10,000, this would give you an answer of 0.08, which is the percent slope or incline. Since preparing your quads for the downhill sections is just as important as being ready for the Newton Hills, we recommend performing early segment speed workouts on a slight decline. This enables you to integrate speed work early in the training cycle while also keeping the training course specific. To compensate for the downhill being aerobically easier, it's best to shorten the rest period rather than making the pace too fast in order to reduce the risk of injury. An example workout would be five by one mile downhill repeats at 5K to 8K race pace with 90 seconds rest. This workout can also be performed on treadmills with a decline feature. This workout simulates the third quarter of the Boston course, miles 11 through 16, followed by the Newton Hills during miles 16 to 21 to prepare you physically and mentally for the hardest part of the race. Perform two five mile tempos at marathon pace or just a bit faster. The first five mile section should be relatively flat, simulating the middle miles of the Boston course. Take a five minute walking or easy jog recovery and then run the second five mile tempo on a mostly uphill course. While this workout isn't as specific or novel as the other three workouts we mentioned, it's important nonetheless. When training for Boston, be sure that some of your marathon specific long runs and marathon pace work are performed on rolling hills. You can get super specific if you want. Some treadmills have the Boston course as a predefined setting, but it's not necessary. The goal is simply to get accustomed to running up and down hills on tired legs. If you live in a flat region and are sick of the treadmill, you might have to get creative when searching for hills. Bridges, overpasses, parking ramps, and the occasional set of stairs may be adequate substitutes. Most runners preparing for Boston are warned about the danger of starting too fast on this course. But despite this common knowledge, you'll still see many runners take off too aggressively in the first 5 or 10k, only to crash and burn after Heartbreak Hill. Asked why they didn't run slower at the start, and most will say, it didn't feel that fast. It's therefore critical that you focus specifically on honing your pacing during your Boston training. These two tips will help. Don't get carried away when performing the downhill portions of these four specific workouts. While it may be fun to bomb downhill at top speed, faster is not always better. In this case, you're simply teaching your body to disregard its internal pace sensors, which will come back to haunt you on race day. It's easier said than done, but stop relying on your watch and learn to feel pace by monitoring your cadence and breathing. Try to avoid fixating on your Garmin during your workout and learn what even pacing feels like instead. One way to get better at this is to allow yourself to look at your watch during the first repeat or so. Then, after getting that feedback, disregard the watch for the remaining intervals and see if you can keep even splits when running by feel. Are there any Boston veterans who have some spicy workouts that really help them get ready for this difficult course? What other advice would you give to runners racing Boston for the first time? For those first timers, is there anything else you'd like to know in preparation for Marathon Monday? Be sure to like and share this video with all your runner friends. Don't forget to check out the links I put in the description below because I've also included some of our other Boston specific resources to help you perform your best on race day. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, have a great run today.